as my love you do me wrong to cast me off so discourteously for I have loved thee very long delighting in your company <laughs> <laughs> Very slow, <laughs> and my tempo is not too good. But then I'm a, I'm an amateur. I'm an amateur. <laughs> <laughs> I always wanted to be a nurse right from a child, and I applied to the local one of the local hospitals, and they wanted two signatures, parents. My father would sign, my mother wouldn't. When I told my mother that I would like to be a nurse. She said, no, you're going to be a secretary and you're going to earn money. And then I heard about this charity and I applied to them. And they would have taken me with no signature at all, but my father signed and I went to be a nurse. I was in my third year when the war started and they shortened our four-year term to three years. And I stayed there until I was called up. And uh, I was only in the army about, I think two years, something like that. There you are. And that's, that's Mick when I first knew him. Looking very handsome. He was in the army and he was a medic, and he was overseas, he was in East e Egypt. And uh, I used to be a dance partner to his older brother, Enrique. And he came home on leave, and I was only 13, so I made no impact at all. But the next time he came back, I was about 16, going on 17, and uh, made a bit of an impact then. And then we started writing and uh, then finally he was drafted home to go to D-Day and uh, we were married on the 23rd of October 1943. Take it out. Not a very good cutting but never mind, I did him. The biggest bunch of flowers I'd ever been given. And somebody said, oh, what were you looking at, the beautiful flowers? I said, no, I was looking at the price ticket. <laughs> <laughs> ah, yes. We were on holiday there. And this was one of those people that come along and snap you. And Mick said, oh, come on. And I'm, I'm just saying to him, I don't want to have a photograph taken. And they, that's the snap that we got of it. <laughs> And people now, they come in, they see this picture and they say, is that you? And I say, yes, and they go, oh, like, have you changed? I never thought it would impact me the way it did. You know, I've had much worse in my life, really, and I just couldn't talk, to my, talk myself out of it. I'd, I'd try and be logical and say to myself, come on, you know, he, he wouldn't dare come back here. But at the same time, if I heard a footfall outside, that was sleep gone for the night. In fact, I slept with the lights on really for over a year because it just could not put the light out. Which then meant to me that that unit was no longer safe. Initially, I just blamed myself because I let him in. And 
I felt that I should have just right from the start say no. But he was the manager and I just thought that was all right. I haven't spoken to very many people about it really because I just didn't want, I don't know, I, I suppose I didn't want people to think that maybe it was my fault. The police told me that they reckon 80% of people who have something like this don't report it because they feel, they feel it was their fault. And I did, I really did. When he was ranting around in my place, he kept on talking about, you old women. And I, I was thinking to myself, you say that once more and I'm going to chuck you out or something. You know, it's just as though, because you're old, you, you're not worth anything. And you're still, you, you're just young people in an old body. You're, not, you're no different, not till you look in the mirror. And you know, it's it just, it, it's just disrespect. And you know, most of the elderly women are mothers and grandmothers. Why should they be treated like that just because they're old? I'd lived there for maybe four years and you would have thought somebody would know well enough that I'm not the type that goes around making up stories. And when I told the managers, I knew she didn't believe me because her, her whole attitude said, come on, this is our friend and he wouldn't do that. I've always felt safe here, now why don't I feel safe? And somebody said to me, probably because had it happened outside the unit, then the unit would be safe. But because it happened in the unit, then that wasn't safe anymore. And although I knew the neighbours kept a good eye on me, it, just, it didn't make any difference. I, I just could not eat, didn't want it. I, I don't know my weight, I think I was probably about 89 kilos. I went down to about 70. Because I'd lost you could say a position as a, a senior nurse, to be sort of brought down to the extent where somebody can come and assault you as though you're nothing. It's, um, it destroys your faith in human beings. And I said to her, well, I'd like to talk to you. I got, felt I had to sell, tell somebody. And she forgot. And as I was getting into the bus to go home, she said to me, oh, I'm sorry. What, what was it you wanted to talk to me about? So in about six words, I told her and got into the bus. And when I turned around, she was going, what, at me. And then she rang me when I got home and she said, Jill, her boss and I are coming to see you tomorrow. She said, because we have to report this. She said, it's our job, we have to do it. When the police said to me, you know, they came to see me and they said, what do you want us to do? If we go ahead and with this case, what is what the final outcome that you want? And I said, I just want him stopped doing it to anybody else. I don't feel he, he's trusted to work with elderly women. She came up to the centre to see me a couple of times and uh, she said to me at one time what I'd like you to do. She said, I want you to stand up 
and imagine that that man is standing in front of you. And she said, now I want you to think about it. What would you like to say or do to him? And I said, I have a think. And what I would like to do is, mm, 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 and a few choice words as well. And I went like that for ages. And then I sat down, I was exhausted. And I said, I feel better now. And I did. And she said, good, that's, that's what I hoped you would do. She said, you've got to sort of face up to it and, and not tell yourself it's your fault, it's not your fault. You, you tell him what you think about him, and I did. And I said to her, oh, did I swear? And she said, well, it didn't matter. <laughs> so I edited that out for you. Sandy was very, very good, very kind. She gave me the phone number of the elder abuse people who just gave me addresses of other people that could help. Among them was yours. And we got contacted each other. And after that, it just grew because you had friends and you talk to friends, and friends decided, yes, they would help. And in the end, I got to Nazareth House. Well, everybody's been really wonderful. I was losing the feeling that people were good. You know, there were no good people. I would sleep probably an hour and a half, two hours. And once I was awake, that was it. I couldn't go back to sleep. And uh, then when I went to Nazareth House, the first night I was there, I slept for seven hours. I had a lot of sleep to catch up on. Just to feel that somebody really meant what they said. You know, I was so used to people saying, oh, you're wonderful, you're wonderful for your age and all this sort of thing. That's not what I want. Why didn't I ask for help earlier? Maybe it took something like that to, to make me. I was so keen on being independent to the end. Somebody said to me, they said, don't be so damn stubborn. Why don't you, when people offer help, why do you knock it back? Why do you say, oh, I can manage? As somebody comes, they see you with a, a load of shopping and say, can I give you a hand? And you turn around and say, no, thank you, I'm fine. She said, what do you think that does to that person? They've offered you help and you've snubbed them. You've said, no, I don't want your help. She said, don't be so awkward. You know, she said, be a bit gracious. Say thank you very much. I'd love you to help me. And I went home and I thought about it for a while and I thought, yes, I suppose I am. I am being like that. But I know a lot of people that do the same thing. They all, you know, the people that I've been sp speaking to have all said, well, I don't want to feel dependent on anybody. It was just mainly getting in touch with you and from that, your friends who all came very kindly to help and they just altered my life completely. I think the first call must be to the police because that's the most important thing. And then the elder abuse people um, told me they don't actually do anything but they give help in contacting others and I think that's the next step. 
and then it will go on from there. If you're given numbers and you don't take, you don't call them as if I hadn't called you, then it would have died with people trying to help and coming up against that brick wall. I found the sexual assault people very helpful, very kind, and they helped me to vent my anger against him, um, which was re a release because I was very angry. Um, I, because I felt that people like that think that you're nothing. They can do what they like and you can't do anything about it. And uh, if you speak up, then you are doing something about it. As it is, he, he will have lost the chance of working with elderly people again, because the police have already stopped that. Whatever card they issue them has been taken away from him. So he can't do it for anybody else. And that, that's all it takes just to tell somebody that will do something for you. The police will, you know, prosecute if they can, but you want somebody to do something for you. Having so many friends now when I didn't have, I had acquaintances, but I didn't have friends. And I have now. I think I've had a lot of help and love from people and I've landed in the most wonderful place, in Nazareth House. Wonderful. Naz Nazareth House is, is safety, it's a home, and that's, that's ongoing all the time. Everybody is so, you know, so helpful. It's really not, really loving and kind. The nurses, the domestic staff, everybody. And then along come people like all you people to help and it restores, restores the faith. There are good people in the world and they will help you. And although I don't feel as I deserve it, I'll grab it <laughs> because it's just been wonderful for me. If it works for me, maybe it can work for other people.